Good evening, you're watching SG News. I'm Hugh Riches. In tonight's program, the legacy of William Wilberforce lives on in Hull and all the weekend sport ahead of this evening's Super League semi-final. And I'm joined by Jonathan Byrne from St Andrew's Hospice, who's here to review the week's newspapers. A 16-year-old girl has appeared in court today, charged with the attempted murder of a welfare officer in North Lincolnshire. 61-year-old Joy Simon was attacked at Winterton Community Academy near Scunthorpe on Monday morning. The girl was also charged with carrying a blade on school premises during the hearing at Hull Crown Court. Mrs Simon remains in hospital. The city of William Wilberforce has hosted its first anti-slavery summit today. National and international experts gathered at the Wilberforce Institute for the Study of Slavery and Emancipation, or WISE for short. Among the speakers was Kevin Highland, uh, the UK's first independent anti-slavery commissioner. He says slavery still exists, including in Yorkshire and Lincolnshire, where 11 members of the same family were sent to prison earlier this month for modern slavery offences. If we look at the, the national figure, the Home Office estimated up to 13,000 people in modern slavery. The uh, the National Crime Agency says that's an underestimate and they believe it to be tens of thousands, which I concur with. You know, a global figure of 40 million uh, in modern slavery. And of course, when the police or when the agencies or when the charities start looking, they generally find. And if you think about the case of those who were trafficked in Lincolnshire um, for uh, labour exploitation on a fairly sort of um, doing pathways and doing you know, small construction work, um, and now the victims uh, who are now speaking are telling their experiences, but now the people who saw that are saying, well, yeah, I did see something that I thought was wrong, but I didn't know what to do. So I think it's a real problem across the UK. If we look in Yorkshire, you know, we have had hundreds of cases reported through the NRM, the National Referral Mechanism, which is the government-funded system for supporting victims. So there are hundreds of cases here that are known. Well, it shouldn't be an issue, and uh, we've, we've, we, a lot of people have been reflecting on that, and this sense of surely we are beyond this, slavery has been abolished. Uh, it has and it hasn't. I mean, we're not talking here about kind of traditional pictures of shackles and chains. What we're talking about now here is something that's very much hidden in plain sight. It involves many, many different kinds of people trapped in many, many different forms of slavery, whether it's forced marriages, child soldiers, uh, you know, sexual exploitation, all of those, of those things. It's a very mixed, mixed picture. Um, it's all about vulnerability. Wherever there's poverty and deprivation in the world, then people will be tempted into slavery and people will be exploited. And I think, I think, I suspect Wilberforce probably knew that, that there would always, there would, this is a kind of structural pro, problem and, and the fight would go on in some way. A primary school in Cleethorpes is on the move. Bursa Primary Academy will move to the former Matthew Humberston Lower School site after the Department for Education approved a business case for relocation. North East Lincolnshire Council has now begun refurbishment works on the Clee Road site to get it ready for moving in September 2018. Moving to the new site means the school can gradually increase pupil numbers over seven years from about 210 now to 315 to support increasing demand. Preservation of one of Hull's most historic landmarks will begin next week. Bricklaying students from Hull College, along with a leading expert, will begin to apply a new secure layer to Beverly Gate on Monday. It follows improvements and recovering with granite tiles completed earlier this year. The work is expected to be complete by the end of October. There's been a spike in thefts of mopeds and motorcycles in parts of Hull. Thieves have been taking vehicles from the front or rear gardens of homes in the riverside and park areas of the city over the last month. Only a few vehicles have been recovered. Police are now urging the public to take steps to secure their machines. And I'm joined now by Jonathan Byrne of St Andrew's Hospice here to review the week's papers. John, welcome. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. I'm very used to saying Jonathan Byrne here from the Young Man's Christian, so what's it called, the YMCA. Indeed, how, yes. How long have you been at the hospice? A week. How's it going? Very well, yeah. Really enjoying it. It's uh, been great to go in right at the deep end. It's a very, very busy place. Lots happening. 
and lots of exciting stuff coming up in the future and what better way to finish my first week off than a trip to come and see some of my favourite people at Estuary TV. Well, it's very good of you to say so. Anyway, I'm glad it's been a good first week and I hope you enjoy the new job. I'm sure it'll Thank be absolutely you. splendid. What have you found for us in the in the public prints? We've got some absolutely fascinating stories in the papers this week. Good. So uh, we'll, we'll lead on the, the Hull Daily Mail uh, reporting on a Piers Morgan and John Prescott spa on live breakfast television. So um, we're more used to probably uh, Lord Prescott sparring with his um, right hand. Indeed. Um, but uh, he's left uh, Piers Morgan flailing and fearing for his job. After all the things Piers Morgan has done over the <laughs> years, an, an interview with Lord Prescott has him fearing for his job after uh, the, the two shared expletives live on air at 7.21 in the morning. Lord Prescott, of um, course, used to be a Member of Parliament for Hull, Hull did. East, I think, uh, would need to be corrected, and Deputy Prime Minister. And uh, they were originally ta started talking about uh, illegal strikes and uh, ended up talking about expenses and who has the bigger wage. Um, so, yeah, very Pre interesting. Uh, Prescott's response to, uh, to, to Piers Morgan was slightly fiery, I suspect. It was, yes. Uh, so, uh, Lord Prescott turned the tables on uh, Piers Morgan when he was asked how much he earns in the House of Lords and told him he got, gets £300, £150 of which goes to Lord Prescott's secretary, £150 goes on a hotel. He asked Piers if he spends all his expenses and said, no, you don't, you're coining it in. Um, to which uh, Morgan replied, um, I don't know exactly how long I'll be in this job, but it might be less than I thought if you keep on swearing. OK. I would imagine it's impossible to be interviewed by Piers Morgan without swearing a lot. Seems to have that effect on people, doesn't he does. it? Yeah. So uh, we move over to the, the Scunthorpe Telegraph. Now, this is a, a story that covers both Scunthorpe and Grimsby. This is a, a coach company that, uh, from Scunthorpe that has taken school children on a trip to the National Fishing Heritage Centre in Grimsby. They've uh, acquired free parking for this uh, educational trip, but being fined £50 for parking inches over the uh, well, the photograph over the shows line, it. And the it, photograph is, it is really just this, the, the fender is just a few centimetres, really, over the white line in the, in the car park. It is, yeah, and... Um, Outrage from the coach company, really, because uh, according to the piece, it takes away 50% of the, the contract that they've uh, earned to take the children to the uh, National Fishing Heritage Centre. And th there's a, an insinuation that it perhaps discourages educational trips if this is how it's going to end up. So maybe a little bit of common sense needs to prevail some from... Some mean-minded Jobsworth has gone round thinking that he or she must earn his daily crust and, or, or that it's just amusing to exercise some petty power. And it's uh, typical of local government. And maybe there's somebody else out there saying, well, rules are rules, and we must abide by them. Well, indeed. Well, they're welcome to come in and express their opinions. <laughs> they will have uh, opportunities to contact us, which I will reveal at the end of the programme. Moving on to uh, the Louth leader. So uh, we have an Alford pupil, Dylan, who gets a maths GCSE at age 11. But he's not just got a maths GCSE at age 11. He has a grade 9 result. So... For those of us that uh, don't do numbers, do letters, that's an A star. So an A star at 11 years of age, and he's actually in the top 3% in the country uh, who've gained an A star grade in mathematics. So it looks like we've got a new Carol Vorderman stroke Rachel Riley on our hands in Lincolnshire. Uh, well, I mean, uh, he's five years in advance of the usual age mm. for taking these exams. Uh, I'm, I'm doing the maths in my head here. It is five years in advance, isn't it? 16 years when you're doing it. Yes, I, I, did, I did not get an A star or a nine or whatever it is in my maths O level. In fact, I forgot to turn up for it. I oh, dear, well, there's always time to retake. Uh, no, I did manage to pass it in the end, oh, but right. it was never my favourite subject. No. Uh, and at, at 11, he's going to be some sort of genius scientist, isn't you he? You would imagine so, yes. Uh, Moving on. This is one of my favourites of the week that has come out of the Skegness standard. So, police lay hands on Smokey and Bandit. Uh, it's not Burt Reynolds. It is actually a cat called Smokey who has become uh, an unofficial mascot of Skegne Skegness Police Station after taking up residency there. But Smokey was pregnant and has had a kitten this week and the kitten is called Bandit. So, uh, puns galore in there, no doubt. I'm wondering whether anybody out there can find a, a Jackie Gleason look-alike bulldog chewing a wasp 
that we can perhaps call justice or Beaufort. Or to be the sheriff, as it were. Yeah, so, yeah. To keep everybody in line. Uh, we're aging ourselves by our familiarity with the film Smokey and the Bandit there. Was that sort of mid-1970s? It was, it was before I was even born, but oh, it's one, it? of my, one of my favourites. Okay, yeah. but it was considerably after I was born, I'm afraid. Good idea, I think, to have a, a, a police station cat always around the place, don't you? Well, everywhere seems to have them. At railway stations, number 10. Of course. Um, and, the, and the foreign office. In fact, sometimes I, I read the news and wonder whether it's actually the cats that are running the nation. And I think that's a rather charming thought, really, isn't yeah, it? Really, really um, yeah. I don't suppose they can do any worse of a job. Let's, let's avoid some of the more obvious puns there. <laughs> uh, quickly, one more before we have to go to the break, I think. And, uh, yeah, from somebody who, who works, uh, who's worked for charities, uh, this business in Grimsby, so it's the Arc Mobile Self Storage, is challenging residents in an innovative manner. Can they fill this huge storage container with items for uh, those less fortunate and donations? We'll be going to the We Are One Foundation. This is in Grimsby. Where is the container? Where can it be found? It's uh, on Railway Street at the uh, Arc Mobile Self Storage. Okay, that's East Marsh in Grimsby. Yes. Okay. And that needs, so that's going to be filled up, all sorts of various goodies. What yeah. are they looking for? So they're looking for clothing, uh, sleeping bags, dry food, tinned food, toys, and, and those will be donated uh, through the winter. John, thank you very much. Uh, come back, join us after the break. Dan will bring us a roundup of all the latest sports news, and I'll be reviewing some more of the papers with John. Welcome back. You're watching Estuary News. Still to come tonight, Dan will bring us a roundup of all the latest sports news. And before that, Jonathan Byrne at St Andrews Hospice is still with me to have a look at some more of the papers. You found, found a few more stories there, John? We have, yeah. So we move over to the Hull Daily Mail. And this one's for Revellers in Beverly. So a popular pub is offering a £5 off a bar tab. This is the if short you, story here. Yeah, if you take a taxi on a uh, Friday and Saturday night. So it's not, not only encouraging punters to come to the pub from uh, out of town, but also as we move sort of into the festive period, uh, discouraging drink driving, which I think is an important thing that we should probably focus on all year round, not just in the sort of eight weeks before Christmas. Absolutely right. I cannot emphasise enough that we are not moving into the festive period. It's late <laughs> September, for goodness sake. Let's not get, get, allow it to become completely ridiculous. But yeah, what a good idea. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not a driver myself. I, I can drive, but I haven't got a car myself, so I'm always, I'm always on uh, two feet or using taxis. And if I could get a fiver off my bar bill for turning up in a cab, that would be... It's a great incentive. Absolute perfection, mm. isn't it? Because uh, I spend quite a lot more than a fiver. Every little helps. What have you yeah. got there? So we've got uh, here Andy Peters, again, off a, a well-known breakfast TV programme. And old children's television presenter. Old children's well. TV presenter. So yeah. it, it's, it's not a joke. That's not the punchline. Um, he turned up at a Grimsby household this Thursday, I believe, or yes, Thursday morning, uh, with a cheque for £5,000 which is a, a nice welcome bonus, first thing on a morning. How very good of him. Um, so, yeah, he was talking to the family about what they like to spend it on. And, uh, and this, is, this is part of some sort of uh, uh, um, project run by Good, good Morning Britain. It is, yeah. yeah. So, um, naturally you asked the family what they like to spend it on, and uh, Mum is very kindly. Uh, a friend has just um, gone through chemotherapy, so she's going to spend some money on one of her best friends. Um, child is looking forward to a, a family holiday in Disney World, whereas Dad uh, came out with, I'd like a weekend in a lap dancing club. <laughs> Each to their own. Well, he's honest, that's, that's at least. What, that's, uh, yeah, the lap dancing club was on the mind first thing on a Thursday morning. Well, I think so. a weekend might be, might be a little bit exhausting. But, uh, so uh, that leads us nicely we, into we, this piece from yes. the, uh, the Bridlington Free Press. A so, segue, uh, I believe, yes. This is uh, a Bridlington couple who have been caught in the act in Domino's in Scarborough. And the Bridlington Free Press have had a field day this week. So it's... Uh, when you say caught in the act, this is the act of love. It is, yes. Mm. Um, so the, I don't know what the positional sense was like in, uh, <laughs> in a Domino's takeaway at uh, that hour on a morning. But, uh, uh, yeah. Yes, Dan did he get Danielle a two-for-one deal? <laughs> from, <laughs> from Bridlington were captured on CCTV in Scarborough. 
And uh, the quote there is, uh, Miss Hurst's dirty laundry has been aired in public. It sounds like a lot more than just dirty laundry what as well. Earth, the dominance, but I mean, it must have been a very urgent and necessary um, well, coupling, was not it? Because yeah. Earth would, would be romantic about a Domino's pizza. Oh. Presumably, they both just wanted a pizza, the action. Oh, very nice, John. Thank you very much. Um, which, again, segues into this interesting pairing from the Hull Daily Mail. So, uh, a little bit on the in-brief there at the side. So we've got a sex pass through dirty knickers into a garden, but then that leads into a story just beneath it of the city sex shop is hiring. So, yeah, so a sub-editor somewhere has had a... Uh, well, it's, it's a theme, I suppose, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I suppose it's a running theme, yeah. Um, but the advert for the job at the Simply Pleasure on Ferrens Way is saying employees will get a generous staff discount. Well, you wouldn't want to be shortchanged, would no, you? No, you wouldn't, no. So... Um, yeah, wondering if they're going to get many I think applicants. That, I think that's probably enough publicity for the, the slightly more esoteric uh, retail industries in our in our region. Uh, tell me more about the, uh, the the activities at St Andrews. So Cincinnati. yeah, um, tonight it's the, my first event I'll be attending. So it's the Pudding Club tonight. The Pudding Club. The Pudding Club, which is a um, it's a six course meal. Uh, where the first course is just uh, a savoury starter, and then you get six puddings. So uh, you get to sample all these different puddings. It was uh, it's a sellout, 52 people, and uh, yeah, very interested to see how that one goes down. And uh, at the end of October, it's the Scare Fest. So this is back for 2017. It ran last year. Um, the Scar Scar Fest. Scare Fest. Scare Fest. You're, you're, as in a ha Halloween style. Oh, Scare. Scare. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so as you, in a you just went very Grimsby there for a while. <laughs> scare fest. It does slip out every I, now and I, then. I, I, so uh, a Halloween themed hike through the woods on the 28th of October in Rugby near Louth. Indeed, and very it, beautiful actually. Yeah, ten, ten pound per person. So uh, if you dare step into the woods at that time of night, I think it's 7:30 p.m. Um, there'll be a few surprises waiting for people. So yeah, very well attended last year, and uh, St Andrews is looking for for people, so this is raising money for Andy's, the Children's Hospice at St Andrews, which covers the whole of Lincolnshire and East Yorkshire, so yeah, people can go onto the website, standrewshospice.com, and, and sign up there. And there's been a lot of work at the hospice in recent years, hasn't there? In there, the last year or so, really, there's been quite a lot of development. There has, yeah, it's an absolutely marvellous place now, a really holistic environment, so the, the event I mentioned tonight is taking place in a place called The Hub, that's open to the local community, not just patients and families and staff and volunteers, it's open to the whole local community. It has Appetite, which is a, a cafe and restaurant, and it really is a, a great space for the community to come and enjoy events and uh, uh, impart in some food and, and drink. You've been, uh, with the YMCA or with the St Andrews Hospice, you've been involved in raising money for mm. various uh, charitable causes for, I won't tell you how long, so I don't want to embarrass you, but a long time. A long time, yeah. Um, is it getting easier? It's getting harder, I think, yeah, getting harder. There's so many causes out there, um, and I think so many awful things happening in the world. I mean, just, you know, the, in the last month, the, the bevy of natural disasters, earthquakes and hurricanes that are destroying and absolutely obliterating parts of the world, and, and people generally want to go out there and, and do their thing to help. So it, it's, I wouldn't say fundraising's going down, it's, it's becoming a very... Uh, competitive market. Well, that's the word I was going to use. It comes to the point where charities are, are, are directly against each other, as it were. Mm. They're, they're, they're absolute rivals. So how does one prioritise? I think that, um, personally myself, I've always prioritised locally because, um, you know, your big national and worldwide charities seem, can, can gain funds from anywhere, whereas generally local charities, it's down to your local people to keep them running. So that's as for you, the YMCA, locally on the Humber, mm. St Andrew's Hospice. Uh, I hope you have a splendid career there, John. Thank I'm you sure very you much. will. And thank you very much for looking at the papers. Um, that was um, an interesting selection yeah. of stories, to say the least. Uh, here's Dan with all the sports news. Rugby first and Hull FC go for the grand final tonight. The Black and Whites travel to face the Leeds Rhinos at Headingley in the Super League semi-finals. The winner will take on the Castleford Tigers at Old Trafford next Saturday after they beat St Helens on Golden Point in the first semi-final last night. Jordan Thompson is in the squad as Lee Radford's only change. 
He's replaced Steve Michaels in the 19 and kickoff tonight is at 8 o'clock. On to the weekend's football and Hull City hosts Birmingham City as they look to halt their run of five games without a win. Fullback Stephen Kingsley will definitely miss the game through injury, but head coach Leonid Slutsky revealed this morning that it's not as bad as first feared. Max Clark will deputise tomorrow following news that he's now in discussions to extend his Tigers contract. It comes following Jared Bowen's extension to 2020, which was announced last night. I think it's very important for our team, for Jared, for supporters, because uh, uh, when player from academy, uh, young players uh, sign a new contract and very easy process, believe me, because really each new signing or resigned contract usually it's a lot of conversation, meetings with agent. Now it was very easy because uh, Jared. He understands really uh, everybody supports him in the team and how City is the best place for him, for his developing and he's very thankful for team, for owner, for, for coaches, uh, for, for his developing and he understands now it's very important to play and he wants to play in our team. Scunthorpe United are at Shrewsbury Town tomorrow, English football's only unbeaten side. They're managed by former Grimsby Town boss Paul Hurst, who's taken them four points clear at the top of League One already. Graham Alexander has confirmed the Iron have no fresh injury concerns ahead of the game, with Connor Townsend remaining sidelined with a calf injury. Kickoff is at three o'clock. Grimsby Town's derby against Lincoln is heading for a sellout, already sold out actually. Tomorrow's game is a 1 pm kickoff at Blundell Park. Russell Slade says he won't need to motivate his players ahead of the game against the Imps, who are just one place above town. And that's all for the spot. Thanks, Dan. Cheer up, Leonid. It's only a game. That's it for tonight. If you have a news story for us, then please visit our Facebook or Twitter pages. Email news at estuary.tv or phone Grimsby 01472 31553 or write to us at Estuary TV, Nuns Corner, Laceby Road, Grimsby, North East Lincolnshire, DN345BQ. Have a splendid weekend until Monday. Good evening. Mm -hmm.